number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering all things theater. And we're coming to you today from the LTV studio in Wainscott, where I have a really special guest, an extraordinarily talented actor, composer, writer, Robert Creighton. Robert, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Oh, Pat. I'm really excited Good to have to you. you. <laughs> yeah, and look at us in person and live <laughs> together. This is great. Oh, I, I, I'm so excited. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have you here. Robert is uh, uh, the star of Cagney. Well, it was Cagney, and now it's going to be top of the world. But he's also a Broadway uh, actor, television actor, film actor. You just you do a little bit of everything. As actors have to do, uh -huh. <laughs> patching it all together. But yes, I've been very fortunate. This is always what I wanted to do, and I'm lucky I make a living just strictly as an actor. Yeah. So I, you know, I think I want to ta start. Should, should we start at the top talking about uh, Cagney and how Cagney came to be, or shall we talk about all the stuff you've done? Uh, I mean, I, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, but you, you just finished doing Frozen, so let's start right there, and then we'll 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 get into Cagney because Cagney is the real project that we want to talk about. Yeah, because well, Cagney's been a big part of my life for the last long many years, and we'll talk a lot about that. Um, and it has come in and out and percolated at different times and had highs and some pauses, and we're just about to have a very exciting new chapter, so I'm glad we get to talk about it. Um, but the thing I was doing most recently was Frozen on Broadway, playing the Duke of Westleton. Not Weaseltown, <laughs> Westleton. Um, and having a ball. I got to originate that part and being part of a Disney, uh, a Disney show on Broadway and that process of seeing the, the way they do it with Tom Schumacher at the helm, you know, and it just it trickles down. Everybody is fully engaged, especially when it's Frozen, you know, their biggest sort of <laughs> franchise. And, um, and, and Disney, you know, it's fun because they don't say most, you know, mo they work on a budget obviously too, but most times they say, what's the best possible way we could do this? And then they just figure out how to do it. You know, and they don't care how much what it costs, even though they've got a budget. Yeah, they do. But whatever they have to. But they want to make it, you know, great. Uh, and, and then the pandemic came and you yeah. were, you, things were ripped out from underneath I you. Had, I had done the role for, you know, the lab in New York and then Denver out of town. Two years on Broadway was just starting year three. If you'd asked me at the beginning, would you want to do three years of playing Wesselton, I probably would have said no. I mean, fun to be a part of it, loved my role, but I was still having so much fun. And then yes, Wednesday night show, Thursday morning I started a new acting class in New York just for fun to get my chops going with a wonderful acting teacher in New York. And, um, and I literally was on my bike riding to the theater to drop my stuff off, go to the gym. My wife called you me. You bike around New York City too? I do, city bike. <laughs> I was a big city bike guy. and. Um, and uh, my wife called and said, well, you might as well pick up your stuff because they're shutting it down. And that was, that was it. Last time we did Frozen. Yeah, and I find that incredible about you. All this, how you, how you keep your finger in to train and keep your, your instrument fresh all the time. Well, obviously for the last year and a half, it's been more challenging, <laughs> you know. But I mean, you were taking a class yeah. just before the pandemic. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, like, uh -huh. I was, kind of things. Um, you know, being having that sort of home base of Frozen and, and at the time thinking, oh, this is going to go on for a while. Uh, and I do do television. I've been yeah, I want to, let me share with some the people some of the things uh, you've done. I mean, you're a recurring guest star on The, on the Good Fight. Great part on that. Uh, guest star on The Family, uh, Life on Mars, Elementary, Law and Order co-star. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Broadway, Frozen, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, Anything Goes, Chicago, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid. <laughs> chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and you, your first Broadway show was Jackie Mason's Laughing Room Only. Yes, Jackie. We had some interesting stories, yes, too. Yeah, it didn't run very long, but for me, as you say, it was my debut, and I had been 10 years out of acting school, and it had great opportunities in there. Um, New York City Opera, and toured with uh, the show Fame for a year, and did Lion King in Toronto for a year. So I worked a lot, in and out of town, but I never quite cracked that Broadway nut. And then finally, with this Jackie Mason show, uh, you know, he was so successful as a stand-up and then wanted to do a musical, and it was him and five-character 
actors and um, took a big risk at my audition, something what I don't recommend, do? but I, I created this character over the years. I did, um, did stand-up comedy in university as this character who would transform at the end named Ernest Finkelstein, and he would wear glasses with tape around the middle and plaid pants up to here and a bow tie. Hi, I can't stay long because my mother's <laughs> out in the car. But she said if I came in here, there'd be people I could talk to. <laughs> she didn't tell me there'd be this many people. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did this crazy character. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry you had to Love see that. <laughs> and, um, but I said, you know what? They want characters, and it's going to be all these sketches and stuff. So I literally told the monitor at the audition, as she was coming out and taking the next person in, the next person, I said, when you get to me, please don't introduce me. I'm just going to run right past you. And, and so she opened the door, and I burst in as, hi, how are you? I came <laughs> and pulled out a piece of paper. I said, I, I wrote a song for my audition, and I sang my, Ernest Finkelstein is my name. It's true. I wrote, I sang my little song. Thank you. Goodbye. And I ran out the door, took off my plaid pants, had other pants on, and bow tie, messed up my hair. And, and then I literally opened the door and was like, Oh my God, that guy was nuts. Hi. And I went and shook all their hands. Robert Creighton, nice to meet you. Oh, and wow. very seriously. And then they just like that rolled so over laughing. And I got the job that afternoon. That was so dynamic. Could have wow. gone either way. That's the thing. It's a risk, right? They could have said, this guy's nuts. But I knew what the show was. And my gut told me to just take a chance. And that was my first Broadway show. And then I've done eight now. And But Frozen, Frozen was... Um, I've done That's a fabulous story. Thanks. Absolutely yeah, fabulous. thanks. So, Absolutely fabulous. Um, Disney, my... I've done three Disney shows on Broadway, and uh, they've always circled into my life at just the right time, as Frozen did. And now, um, you know, like it ended in such a sad <laughs> for everyone. You know, we all have our own story about when the world shut down. But um, you know, for all of us in that show, and been on a long journey together, it just ended out of nowhere. And uh, but now I'm getting a chance to do it again. I would have never. I have two small kids and had no desire to do it on tour. The tour was running for a month. It shut down in Portland, Oregon. It starts again in September in Buffalo. And I currently am hanging my hat <laughs> in Buffalo, <laughs> where my <laughs> wife is from. And they called and said, would you do the first three cities of the tour? Because the, the gentleman playing my role is having a baby. He and his wife having a baby. And, uh, and by the way, it, it starts in Buffalo. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> stay thank home. Thank you. So I work, <laughs> yes, I work for seven weeks, rehearse and play Shays, gorgeous theater in Buffalo, and then I do Minneapolis, Salt Lake City, put a closure to that frozen journey, can say goodbye to that show, and then I'll come home mid-November, and then on with Cagney. After and we'll come full circuit. Ca so now I saw Cagney the first time at the York, mm -hmm. and then I saw it again at the West Side, where it played for 15 months almost. I mean, it had outstanding reviews. Everybody raved about it, even yeah. me, I raved about <laughs> it Thank too. you. And you were nominated for a Drama Desk and an Outer Critic Circle Award, yes. and you won what is the Fred, uh, Fred Astaire, Fred, uh, now the Cheetah Rivera Award? Yeah. For dancers. For no, dancing, yeah. For, for dancing. Yeah. And I, Shocking, so, but I did. So, <laughs> so let's, let's, show, let, let's show the clip from Cagney. From, from, this is from, the, from Cagney. Yes, from and, the West Side. But, but now the show, the new show with the new director is going to be called Top of the World. That's right. Correct. Mm -hmm. But this is when it was Cagney. Who's making a big splash on Broadway right now? Cagney? James Cagney? Warner here, make me happy.
ladies, gents. <laughs> I love Fun it. I love see. it. Don't ask me to do some of those moves today. I'll We're be, not gonna ask I'll you be to in the that. hospital. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta worry. amp up for that. <laughs> but yeah, and you, you have two uh, incredible women uh, producers: Ricky Kane Larimer and uh, uh, Kate, Kate Edelman Johnson. Kate Edelman Johnson, yeah. which, whose father, had so much to do with Cagney. Yeah, there's so many. Well, I'll, I'll say this about them in reference to the journey of this show. So. Uh, this show started as a dream in acting school when a teacher told me I reminded of Jimmy Cagney and that sort of thing. I remember that too. Which yeah. Is, which and I just, how long ago was that? That was in the early 90s when I started talking about doing a show about James Cagney. And then I started writing it with Peter Cauley in 2003. And uh, we hooked up with our original director, Bill Castellino, and a composer, Christopher McGovern, in 2007. Premiered in Florida at West Palm Beach in 2009. A couple other it productions. Kept, it kept shaping, and taking then, shapes in mm -hmm, different forms. Started as four person, grew to six people. Then I got busy on Broadway, thankfully, for about almost five years. And then the York Theater, um, did a, we did a reading at the York Theater in June of 2014. And then we're, we were in their season, which you saw in the spring of 2015. Right. And, uh, and that led to um, our connection to Ricky Kane Larimer, who's on the board of wonderful theater out here at Bay Street, which is right. thriving and... Um, I know they do wonderful work, and she also uh, is on the board of the New York, York Theater in New York, and is a big supporter there. And we connected there, and sort of my passion for this show, and sort of have been pushing it along up the hill for all those many years, and all the right people have come into the path as it's kept moving forward, you know, and just kept pushing along. And, she, and Ricky was a key, I call her L.A., stands for Little Angel, <laughs> because she just flew she in is. at the right moment, and that allowed us to get a pro commercial production in her, her passion, joining with mine, to see this succeed in New York, and we did it in uh, at the West Side. And Ricky knows how to make things happen, oh, come that's on. for sure. And, and uh, we ran for 15 months. No shows run off Broadway for 15 months these days, so it was a huge hit there, and while we were running there, Kate Edelman Johnson came to see it. Uh, and we met afterwards. Did they not? Did they know each other before? No, they, they didn't. That's what's really. I am. Cool. I, I have to take. I have to say because Ricky always thanks me, and so does Katie for bringing them together. Because uh -huh. now they're the best of friends, and 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 both have joined in their passion for seeing the show succeed. But I met Kate, and we went out for dinner. And her father, as you said, was Lou Edelman, who produced and wrote a dozen of Cagney's films, and um, and sh she just started telling me stories and. We shut down Joe Allen's and kind of fell in love with each other, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, and uh, and now we did that production, and then Kate encouraged us to do the show in L.A. Right, on, you know, where all the ghosts and all <laughs> the only so ghosts. You, you, you did in L.A. about a year ago, right? Oh, two years fall ago. Fall of 2019. I mm -hmm. took and two months off. Short, from, just from a short, just a short. We did a month there, mm -hmm. and it was and a huge hit out there as well. But now, how is it changing? I mean, now you're taking it to London. Now, now you you've you've got it. A new director, yeah. and you're rewriting the script, and you just had a reading that went really well a couple of days ago, right? Yeah, which was very exciting. So, so how is it changing? Well, I'll tell you. So we did the, the LA, and then we did um, we did two uh, a month out at Pioneer Theater Company in Salt Lake City, where we expanded the show oh, to yes. twelve people. Mm -hmm. As sort of look what it would look like as a Broadway show in a in a very so you went large from six to twelve, uh huh, very large format. And then um, in the last year, just before the pandemic hit. Um, 
we reached out to John Rando, Tony winning director, and I've worked with him twice before in encore shows, and I'm a huge fan of his and a friend of his. And he has, uh, and he agreed to, he, he's, he knew of the show, he read the script, and he had some great uh, new ideas that we hadn't thought of before. And we're now working with him. And we've changed about, um, I'm going to say up to 30% of the book. It used to be, uh, if you remember, Warner and Cagney had these scenes backstage at SAG when they were both older in 1978. And then we would flash back and tell Cagney's story from that scene as the peg in the ground. And now we do it in a much more linear way. We start, uh, and there's an Irish wedding where you meet Cagney's dad, and you sort of start to see in a real dramatic way why Cagney lived the way he did and why, in fact, why his life became worthy of making a musical about, the way he stuck up for the little guy and the way he stuck up for himself against Warner. And then we m meet Warner as the time comes to meet Warner in his journey. Um, and w so we've been working slowly over the last year, Peter Cauley, the book writer, and John Rando and myself, and... Uh, not a lot of the music is changing, so Christopher McGovern's coming back into the process now, but um, we, it led to us uh, doing two days uh, in New York last week with a cast, and we've, we've sized it at eight right now. That could go. In person, live, with in people person, watching. In person, around it. a table, <laughs> uh, digging into the script, and my favorite thing to do as an actor, because you're sitting around the table discussing it and the characters and what works and what doesn't work and stuff, but it was so exciting, Patrick, because... It's taken the show, which is every time we've done a production, and as I said, all those right people uh, have helped us move forward, and John was the next key factor in helping us move the story to the next level, and it really was so exciting when we finally presented it on Friday afternoon to, um, to know that the fruits of our labor over the last year had brought it to this new top of the world. We're calling it, instead of Cagney, which I always loved that name because I was such a fan, but I think... Um, to help us succeed as we move to London and do a workshop later this year in London with this new script. Uh, I'll go and we'll cast it with a British cast. I think Top of the World and is the dynamite. Title. I think so too. <laughs> I really do. It'll be Top of the World, the James Cagney story or the right. James Cagney musical. So you know who it's about. Okay, well, you used to call it Hollywood's tough guy in tap shoes. Yeah, that was the tagline. Like that. That's right. Um, but we're really excited about where we are right now. And I think London. Everyone I talk to says, London's going to love the show. Now, I've never worked as an actor in London. I've been there Whoa, several times. But, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, so we'll go later this year, and we'll do a— have you, have you got dates already or not? We'll start late November 21st. This is just a workshop. So oh, okay. We'll, John Rando's opening a show on the West End. No, what I meant, you don't have dates for— the, you know. No, no. Mm -mm. So we'll go. John Rando is sticking around after he opens Back to the Future on the West End, and he'll cast it, and then I'll go with— uh, uh, with Ricky and Katie and Will um, and our general manager and you know our choreo choreographer is Josh Burgoss, wonderful Broadway television choreographer. He's he's a superstar and he has stuck with us all the way along. You're a superstar too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but we're excited. So we'll all go to London. I'll go and um, play with a bunch of British actors and we'll create this new version there uh, and then hope to do a production in London in 2022. Rob, yeah. they tell the story. You know what? What I find really fascinating is all your skills. I think of you as a tap dancer, and I read read up about you, and it's not. It's nothing you came. It's something you came to kind of later on in life. Sure, later. Didn't in even life. think about. Can you share a little bit? About well, when I was a little guy, I loved. My parents used to let me stay up. The only thing that let me stay up super late for was to watch old Fred Astaire movies and Gene Kelly movies, and that's who I loved. Like I loved Fred Astaire, which when I won the Fred Astaire Award was a. <laughs> <laughs> Big, tearful, exciting moment for me because that's when my dreams started. I had two dreams as a young Canadian. To be a goalie in the NHL, play hockey, which was clearly never going to happen. <laughs> and my it's other dream... how as children we think, think we can do things oh, we man. can't. I remember my dad <laughs> at 12 saying, uh, Bob, you are not going to make the NHL. You're really good at singing. I wasn't dancing. Did you hear it at 12? Uh, and uh, No, I was like, I'm <laughs> gonna be, of course I'm going to be that. I'll do Broadway later. I'm going to be a hockey player. <laughs> and he said, you should stick with singing. Um, and I did. But uh, um, the, uh, the journey, what, what did you ask me? About the journey? How, how, how oh, you, tap dancing. How, how the passion got ignited. And well, that was how the passion got ignited. When I was seven, I went to two dance classes because I really loved Fred Astaire and this dancing. And I was the only boy in the class. And I was in my little town, and it was just me and all these girls. And... Uh, I took two classes, and then I said to my mom, I'm not going to go back to Did it turn you because you were the only boy? Yes. And if I could go back and talk to myself now, my son takes is 
right, 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 right tap dancer. Right. He's nine. Right. If, and I have said to him, as I would have said to myself, but he loves it. He doesn't need me to say this, but I would have said to myself, who cares? Keep dancing. <laughs> you love it so much. So I came to tap dancing. I learned a few steps when I was 18 at a summer program. I used to go down in the bathroom when everyone else was sleeping, and I would practice those four or five steps, and I could do them perfectly and fast, but that's all I knew. And I didn't do it again until I moved to New York, and I was 20, 21, and went to acting school. And on so had, how, how long was that? How, how many years did you do any? Uh, like two and a half years. I did, well, I would make, I would do those steps I knew. So I didn't so learn so any. Let's but put you, it that you, didn't, you didn't expand? No, didn't expand. And then I came to New York, went to acting school, and I went nuts on tap dancing for four or five years in my early 20s. A, a gentleman named Charles Goddard, who still teaches in New York. Well, while you were at the academy? Uh-huh. On the side, I would take it. And when, when I got out of acting school, I got a Pepsi commercial with Shaquille O'Neal and a show at Paper Mill Playhouse in the same month. Whoa. <laughs> um, no, when I got out of acting school, I, got, I did a play, I got my equity card. Then I didn't work for 10 months. I worked as a paralegal or oh. like a gopher at um, Rockefeller Center. I loved it. Got to dress up every day and go play a character and... Uh, my friend got me a it's job. Fun to go to Rockefeller but Center. But the, <laughs> the partner I worked for, um, Warren Forsyth was his name. It was Victorian Forsyth. And Warren was the nicest old guy. And he knew my passion about tap dancing. And I said, I, can I go at lunchtime to take this class? And so three days a week, I'd come early. Wow. I'd go take an hour and a half tap class consistently for 10 months. I took three classes, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'd run back, work the afternoon. And he was so supportive. And then I got... After 10 months, I got a paper mill show and a Pepsi commercial. And that's, uh, I've had little jobs since then, but basically that started me working as an actor. Um, but a year out of acting school, and I've been going ever since. Um, but, but my passion for tap dancing was huge. And I think that helped me get pretty good pretty quickly because I just wanted it so badly. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a key for me. I always tell young people now, build your foundation of training as wide and as strong as you can, and then you can build your career high on that. And which I, is really I was conscious. I, I consciously I, did that. He was a music degree, I just acting degree. It was extraordinary the opportunities you have had to train. Oh. I mean, right from the beginning. And and I because I did this morning. Barry sent me a copy of your webpage, and you had that that, that story mm. that kind of documents journey, yeah. your journey. And every th every time I kept reading this journey, I'd say, Oh my God! All these wonderful opportunities. All another one, another one, another one. So you're just so facile. Well. well I, and and um, I'm consciously grateful for all of those. I, you know, as you say that, I'm, I'm so lucky. I, I remain grateful for the, the people who came into my life in my little town, gentlemen, you know, little rural town in Ontario. Gentlemen went away to London to study, came home, started a boys' choir. And because I was, had access to that training that he brought to my little town, I was able to sight read music by the time I was eight and was very was very disciplined and lots of harmony and all this choral music and stuff and then uh, the tap teachers I met along the way the acting teacher in my university when I was studying voice there was only one acting class where I did my music degree but she was um, affiliated with Stratford Festival in Ontario and she knew she knew exactly what she was doing and <laughs> I if I had gotten she just put me on the right path let's put it that way I, ha I came in contact with her and it was it was amazing and I still you know, as an actor, you never stop training. I, as I mentioned, the day I, I was Some going to an not, acting class. Not all actors are that passionate about. You know, what, what I suspect about you is the same passion that you brought to tap dancing, you bring to everything. And it j just, you know, tap dancing was something new that you didn't have, so you were really super focused on it. Yeah. But your passion is, is overwhelming for everything you do. It's clear. Well, you know what? I feel... Again, it comes down to gratitude for me. I'm very grateful that I get to do what I think I was put here to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I think I had, I'm fortunate that I have some gifts, but I really, I love doing what I do. So it's not hard for me to train in that way. It's not hard for me to go to an acting class. It's not, that's not work. That's exciting for me. To I understand. It's fun, right? And, <laughs> and I came um, from a home, a, a mom and dad who, uh, you know, not everybody has this. Again, so grateful, but they, they, saw my talent, and they provided opportunities. They also instilled good work ethics, mm -hmm. too. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. And, and, and supported you. My so. dad was a small-town doctor, and he worked for 56 years in his practice. Just retired. He's 88 now and retired when he was 84. Oh. So, yeah. So, that, yeah, he, th they did, and I'm grateful for that. But, and now I get to do it, and I'm so glad after this pause, you know, this hiatus in everyone's life for very 
many reasons. I, I'm, a, I'm a dad first, you know, dad, husband, actor, How many somewhere down you the have? list. I have a, a nine and eight-year-old now. My daughter's wow. nine and eight. But it's provided. Your daughter's the older one? No, son, RJ. Oh, perfect. Yeah, nine, <laughs> and my daughter who just turned eight, Samantha. And, um, you know, it's fun when you talk about uh, the passion aspect. I, I do feel lucky that I get to say to them, well, I'll just tell you an interesting story. When we were sitting out back where we're living now in Buffalo having, having dinner at about 7 o'clock, which is late, but my wife had put this runner on the table. I said, oh, that's from my dressing room at Frozen. Uh, in the St. James, and she said, yeah, it was in the box, so I got it out, and I was like, oh, and we started talking about Frozen, and my daughter said, Daddy, are you retired from acting? Are you retired from doing Broadway shows and TV and stuff? And I said, I said, no, sweetheart, and I, this is what I'm driving at. I turned around and said, no, that was, you know, that was always my dream, and I worked really hard to be able to, to do that, and when no one's doing it right now, when we're all back, I'll do it too, and she said, oh, and they both said, we loved when you were in Frozen, and we like, you know, we like you being home for dinner. That was their thing. We like you being <laughs> home for dinner and to yeah. put us to bed. But, and while we're having that co conversation, Patrick, my, I'm an Apple Watch. My agent's name comes up on my watch. I step inside the door, pick up my phone, and I said, hi, Pete. And I tell him the story of the runner, and we're talking about Broadway. Uh, and he said, he said, well, you might have to put it back in a dressing room. They just called, would you do the first three cities of the tour? And that's how it happened while we're having that conversation. <laughs> but my point is I feel lucky to be able to say to my kids and whatever their passion ends up being that it, it can happen, you know, so because that's how it happened well, for me. I, you know, what I think is the biggest combination that you bring to the table is gratitude and passion. And it's when key. you put that combination together, it kind of is like a circle that just keeps going because you're passionate about what you're doing. You get, you're, you're grateful for the opportunities you have and it just, sure. it just, it, it makes the passion really special. Thanks. Yeah, my motto is good things happen. If you get an uh, email from me that's from my <laughs> phone, my, the bottom says good things happen because I believe it. The more you recognize them when they show up and you're grateful for them, the more they keep showing up. And even when it's hard times, you just remember afterwards, good things happen. It helps you get through because it's not always going to be a good time. <laughs> We've all been through it lately. And but we're out of time. <laughs> on the other end, well, <laughs> good things happen, and this was one of them. So thank you. God, thank you so much. Yeah, for my pleasure. <laughs> I like talking to you. Ditto.